Hello and welcome to the Week Ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 9th of November 2018 and the time has just gone 11.45 GMT. Now this is a Week Ahead video so we are looking ahead to the week which begins Monday the 12th of November until Friday the 16th of November and it's very much going to be a sterling uh, British pound focused week. Uh, what we've had this week, um, we've had continued uncertainty surrounded by Brexit, so no kind of real news there. Uh, the Democratic Unionist Party, the DUP of Northern Ireland, continue to be unhappy with Theresa May. Um, they essentially want a zero difference uh, between Northern Ireland and Great Britain post-Brexit, uh, where it kind of seems like Theresa May could potentially look to actually have a, have a border, a trade border down the Irish Sea, which, which of course uh, would not make the DUP very happy. Uh, we've had some economic indicators out of the UK this week and they haven't been too great. The services PMI numbers at the beginning of the week uh, fell to a seven month low and some of the some of the property and house price figures from the UK this week were also very disappointing. So um, on next week, the big numbers to watch out for in terms of British uh, economic indicators. Oh, sorry, it's also worth pointing out that today we, we heard from the, the UK, the, the, the economy grew by 0.6%. Uh, in the third quarter, uh, in line with the ex 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 estimates, so at least there was actually some some decent news in there as well. Uh, but looking ahead to next week, um, on Tuesday and Wednesday, we have some important economic indicators from the UK. Uh, we have inflation, and we also have the unemployment and wage numbers. Um, to be perfectly honest, uh, unemployment is is at multi is at multi decade lows, multi decade lows in the UK. Uh, so any kind of slight change, either by you know, one tenth of one percent in our direction. Uh, it's going to make a whole lot of difference. It's really going to be about the inflation, about the inflation figures, and also the wages figures. Uh, recently, inflation dipped to 2.4 percent, and the most recent wages figures, um, excluding bonuses, uh, show that, that that earnings actually increased, in, are increasing by 3.1 percent. So, the increase in wages is outstripping the cost of living, which which gives workers a, a real a real pay rise. Uh, and while that while while there continues to be a fairly sizable difference between earnings and inflation, that's going to benefit the British worker and British consumer. And when British when the British consumer has more money in their pockets, the more likely to go and spend more. And that's what, that's what, that's what I should should drive the economy along. Um, taking a look at what, what potentially we could see on the back of this, any kind of potential moves. Take a look at pound versus the US dollar. Um, sterling has been. In, as a, between April and August, it started to take a fairly decent decline against the, the against the US dollar. It a stage a reasonable comeback uh, between mid August and late September, but once again we, we have seen a bit of, we have seen a fairly sizable sell off. But notice how the lows of November failed to take out the lows of August, um, first of all, and then second of all, we had a fairly decent a fairly decent rally here. And essentially, while we, we remain north of the 130 mark, uh, it's likely we could see further ground being made on, on the pound versus the US dollar. It's, that being said, it's also a bit worrying that the highs of November here haven't taken out the highs of October. So this is a series of, lo of lower lo lower highs, which would point to a potentially further losses. Uh, but like I said, if we manage to hold above the 130 mark, we could see further gains be made. Uh, and if we do manage to hold above 130 and we can push higher, we could be looking heading up towards here, the one spot 30 to 50 region. And then if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading up towards this area here. The highs of um, the highs of late of September, which is just shy of one spot 33, and if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading up towards the highs um, of of, um, of mid July, which come into play at one spot 3361. If the market does turn over on itself yet again and kind of and start to push lower, we could be looking heading back down towards the most recent the, uh, the the late October lows, and if we go south of that, we could be looking heading back down towards the August low of one spot 2661. Take a look now at what's going on on Euro Sterling. So Euro Sterling has been in a fairly, uh, fairly, fairly decent decline since August. It hasn't been exactly quite the perfect example of higher highs and higher lows. We have, we have seen some decent, um, uh, we have seen, seen some decent bounce backs, um, but it, but actually this this morning we actually went fell to a seven month low on Euro Sterling. So it gives you an indication uh, of what we're uh, of what we're looking at. And if the market, if the, if the downward trend since August does continue to kind of push on, uh, we could be looking heading back down towards. Um, we could be looking heading back down towards this area here in, in late April at zero spot 86.80. And if we go south of that, we could be looking heading back down towards the kind of mid-April lows of zero spot 86.20. 
and he can and he can have bounce backs uh, in Euro sturdy. May run into resistance in around the zero spot eighty eight area. Clock how it actually acted as both support and resistance not too long ago. And then also if we go beyond that, we could be looking at towards the journey moving average. This red line here, which comes into play at zero spot eighty eight thirty six. Once again, notice how it actually acted as very decent support and resistance not too long ago. And if a, if a, if a metric or a level has been uh, important in the past, it makes it all the more likely it'll, make, it'll be important in the future. It's only if we actually take out this high here in late, late October, uh, which comes into play in at a zero spot 89.39, but 89.40, should then we actually be kind of, be, could that, could then we start to think that the, the downward trend since August is actually no longer actually in, in, intact. Now, if we're going to talk about the British pound, uh, we also may as well talk about the FTSE 100. And sometimes there can be a, 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 an inverse relationship between the two. Um, so obviously a strong pound could have the, first seat, the FTSE, and a weak pound could actually benefit the FTSE. Uh, so the chart I want to look at uh, is a weekly chart on the FTSE 100. And the reason I want to look at that is because I want to look at this red line here, the 200-week moving average. Uh, it was a very, very decent metric, and it has acted as very decent support in the past. Granted, we didn't manage to trade below it in late October, but, but uh, in, in mid October. But in late October, late October, we cl we closed firmly above it, uh, and we we've, we've been above it since. Granted, the, the highs of November haven't yet taken off the highs of, of October, so you know the, the sentiment is still is is reasonably bearish. But ultimately, while we hold above this level here, the the, the red line here at 69.61, it's likely we could see further gains. On the foot 200 and if you do push on higher up, up on higher here we could be looking back down towards uh the early after september lows of being around 72 20 72 30 this area here conversely i move back below the 200 week moving average would, would be quite bearish and if you manage to take out um if you manage to take out the march lows which come into play at 68 spot 68 30 39 we could be looking heading back down towards levels not seen since November 2016, so nearly, nearly two years ago, uh, at 6678. Uh, looking at what else, we what else we have up next week. Uh, on Tuesday, we have first half figures from Vodafone. On Tuesday, Wednesday, we have a number of real estate investment trust companies reporting their figures. Land Security first half numbers, British Land first half numbers, and Workspace first half numbers. On Wednesday, uh, we have economic indicators from China. Uh, we have retail sales, fixed asset investment, and industrial production. On Wednesday and Friday, we have Eurozone GDP and CPI. And also uh, on Wednesday and Thursday, we have US inflation and US in retail sales. Um, if you have any comments on this video or any of, of other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free. Please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.